Welcome to Davie United Methodist Church. I am Pastor Scott Didrickson, and we are blessed and excited that you are here with us on this beautiful little chilly. I like the weather. It's nice. Beautiful Sunday morning. Thank you for being here. A few announcements as we get started. So if you haven't checked, there's a box in the back with all the Christmas cards. So please check that one more time. There might have been a few that came in. If you've already checked it, check it again. Uh, we will be pulling the box after this service, and if your cards are still in there, then we're going to call you <laughs> and tell you to get your cards. But so there, there's lots of Christmas cards still back there. Also, if you get an envelope box with for your tithes, gifts, and offerings, those are in the back as well if you haven't picked those up. Please get those this week. We're going to start calling you. We don't want to call you, so grab your stuff. Amen? Um, we're going to be restarting our Wednesday night Bible study at 7 p.m. on February the 3rd. So that it's going to be a hybrid format. So we're going to have it in person in Bregan Hall, but we will also be live streaming it through Zoom. I know it sounds complicated. So we'll be able to see you and you'll be able to see the group. And you'll be able to see everybody involved. It should be a pretty uh, fun way to do it. The Boy Scouts have been doing it for, for a while now. And so we think we'll, we've got it figured out. And so February the 3rd, Wednesday, 7 p.m. is going to be our restarting of our Wednesday night Bible study. We're still working on a Sunday school class in between the 9 o'clock service and the 11 o'clock service. But we've got some issues Bregan Hall is being used by the Chinese congregation right now, so we got to work that out as well. So speaking of streaming and the internet, we this year now we we have our internet live stream to a place where we feel like it's pretty decent. It's it's much better than it was before. Uh, we're at a place where we're not embarrassed by what we're putting out. We think that it's it's a good product, so we're going to ask you to help us out with a couple of things. First of all, if you have a Facebook account, we ask you to go onto your Facebook account, go to our page. If you haven't liked it yet, please like it. But there's also a place up at the top, and it, it's usually in the middle of the page. It's a little tab that says Review. We ask you to click on that tab, and they don't have a star, they have a star rating, but they don't let you give a star rating, they just ask you to write a review. And somehow, they take that review as either a positive or a negative. So we ask you to write a beautiful review. It doesn't have to be that long. It could just say, five stars out of five stars. We love this church. We love this congregation. Something. Um, something positive, I hope. <laughs> and, and give us a review on Facebook. And that's going to help us as we are getting exposure to our community and inviting them, not just to church, but into relationship with God, which is really what this is about. And so we ask you, first of all, to review that. Also, if you are at home watching this video on YouTube or Facebook, please give us a, a thumbs up or a heart or something, a comment or a share. All three of those, the more shares, comments, likes that we get in the first 30 minutes of a live stream going live, the more exposure it's going to get. That's the way the algorithms work. So if you're watching this at home, obviously hit the like button, comment. But if you're here, when you get home, next time you're on Facebook, go to our page, and look at that week's service. Obviously, you were here, so you've already seen it. You don't have to watch it again, but just click on it and give us a like, give us a comment. All of this is helping us get exposure through the internet to our community. We actually are boosting posts on YouTube and Facebook, and we're directing it to people within 10 miles of us. But the more exposure, the more likes we get, the more people will see it outside of our church. We've been running into some issues on Facebook where third parties have been red flagging our videos for copyright infringement. And all of these red flags, we have won every single fight, but there's a certain company, and I'm not going to name them, 
that has an algorithm that their AI computer system tags us for things like my prayer, they'll tag us for, which is not a copyright issue. We have all the proper streaming licenses. We pay for those. We do everything by the book, but we're running into some issues with Facebook. That's why we're, we're streaming on Facebook and YouTube, and we're posting the 9 o'clock service on YouTube, which will be connected to our website, davyumc.com. And you can go there and watch the live stream directly from the website. You can go to our YouTube page. And then the 11 o'clock service, we are going to try to stream on Facebook. If we continue to run into the copyright issues, then we will be and we already are looking at different platforms to stream from. And we want to give multiple platforms so more people can see it. But we need your help. We need your help to do the likes, do the comments. The more that you do that, the more people outside of this church are going to see it. We're also going to be editing out smaller sections of the beautiful music that our musicians play each week, some of the prayers, and we're going to put those into smaller five-minute um, posts onto Facebook, YouTube, these other platforms, so that people will be able to be invited to our church and to this relationship with God without having to watch a 50 minute long service. So we're gonna be working on that through this year and we just really invite you to be a part of it and to help us as we go through this, amen? Let us open worship with a word of prayer. All right, good morning church. Um, let us take this time to clear our minds, open our hearts, and welcome God's presence in, all right? Bow your heads. God, who watches over us, offering us light and hope, be with us this day as we hear the story of Jesus' baptism. Help us to remember your healing, cleansing, and calming and claiming love for us. Remind us again of the many ways in which you reach out to us. May the image of the, of the waters be for us an image of hope. Bring us closer to you, loving God. Embrace us again with your love. We open our hearts to you this day. In Jesus' name, amen. you to sing along with us as we sing uh, Come and Go With Me. Clap along. You can use your digital instruments there, right there in front of you. Come and go with me to my father's house, to my father's house, to my father's house. Come and go with me to my father's house.
please stand if you're able for the reading of the word of God. Psalm chapter 29. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders, the Lord over mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kabash. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all say, glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. May the Lord bless this reading of his holy word. Please be seated. Please stand if you're able for the reading of the word of God. Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. While a wind from God swept over the face of the waters, then God said, let there be light, and there was light. 
And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. May the Lord bless this reading of his holy word. Please be seated. So as we go into our time of prayer, this week we are praying for Liberty Christian Church and Pastor Don McCann. Pastor McCann asked us to pray for our country for healing and spiritual growth, that our country would come to know and grow closer to God even in these difficult and trying times. And also prayer for all pastors that they lead their congregations into this deeper relationship. So this is the baptism of the Lord Sunday. And normally this would be a perfect time for us to do a remembrance of our baptism. And we would have a water fount with shells and we would ask you to come up and we would let you take a shell and we would remember your baptism. But because of COVID and all of the things that we're going through, we are not able to do that symbolic act but we are still able to talk about and go through the liturgy of our baptism and reaffirmation of the vows that we took, either when we were baptized or when we went through confirmation as a child or we joined a Methodist church. And so we'll be doing a lot from our book of worship and going through the liturgy of baptism today through the sermon and also through this prayer. But I want you to, especially when I'm reading the liturgy and doing these prayers, I want you to listen to the words. The liturgy in our United Methodist Book of Worship is very intentional. It is through the words explaining what we believe and how we understand baptism. And it's very important to us. It is not just a moment in our past, either as a child or a teenager or as an adult, but it is something that we are called to live into throughout the rest of our lives. Baptism isn't a day, a thing that we did one time. It's actually something we're supposed to be living into and standing on our entire life. So please listen to the words, let them seep into your soul as we go through these prayers. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time you sent Jesus Nurtured in the water of a womb, he was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his works to the nations, his glory among all the Pour out your Holy Spirit, and by this gift of water, call to our remembrance the grace declared to us in our baptism. 
For you have watched, washed away our sins and you clothe us with righteousness throughout our lives. That dying and rising with Christ, we may share in his final victory. Oh, praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the words of God. This is from the 19th chapter of the book of Acts, verses 1 through 7. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, into what then were you baptized? They answered, into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. 
On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. All together, there were about 12 of them. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Heavenly Father, on this day of the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ, we ask you, we beseech you to pour out your Holy Spirit into us, into our lives, into this church, into this congregation, into this community, into this nation, into the world. Transform us, change us, bring us close to you, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. So there's a story of a Baptist preacher's son. He was about eight or nine years old. He loved watching his father preach. And he loved all the different things that his father would do at different services. And one Sunday, he was amazed when his father baptized a family, including young children, And the way that the Baptists do it in the baptismal font as they are immersed and dunked, he just loved that. And he quickly started thinking about how he could try that himself as young children love to emulate their parents. And so when they returned home that afternoon, he decided that he was going to baptize the family's three cats. There was a young mother cat with one kitten and also an old tabby that had many years on him. The first cat, the kitten, was very easy and the kitten almost seemed to enjoy to be on the water. The mother cat, the young mother cat, still was a little bit more difficult but still went under the water in the bathtub pretty easily. But then he got to the tabby. And there were blood and scratches and bites and hissing and water everywhere. The cat finally got free and ran off. The child found the cat, cornered it, brought it back into the bathroom with more hissing and scratching and biting and blood and water. And the boy could never get that cat under the water, no matter how hard he tried. Finally, the boy gave up, and the cat walked away, looked back, shook himself off, gave one last dirty look, and sprinted out of the bathroom. And the boy yelled after the cat, fine, go be a Methodist. And it's funny, we can joke about this, and I pray if there's any Baptists in the the room, understand this this is just a joke over the differences we have in the way that we baptize. And in this scripture today of Paul with these disciples, we see that this is not a new issue. This has been going on from the beginning of understanding what baptism is, how we believe it, how do we practice it, how do we even put the water on the person being baptized. These arguments and differences have caused division and new denominations through the history of our Christian faith. It's one of the biggest division dividers that we have is understanding baptism and understanding how and why we do it. And so this Sunday, this is a Sunday that we celebrate every year in our liturgical calendar. It falls after Epiphany. It's usually the second Sunday of January. And this is this moment of celebrating really Jesus' baptism and just baptism in general. It would be a great moment and time for us to remember our baptisms and have you come forward. We've done this several times here since I've been here. 
I believe we should remember our baptisms as much as possible. Because baptism is not, as I said earlier, a moment in our past. Baptism is right now. It is going on in our, our, our lives in this moment and is also our future. It is both the past, present, and future. It is just like our Wesleyan understanding of grace. God loves us and has loved us our entire life, even before we were born. This is prevenient grace, that God has been wooing us into relationship long before we decided to accept God into our lives, which is that justifying moment, which represents and is represented by this symbol of baptism. But it is also the sanctification process that we will continue to grow and live into our relationship with God and grow deeper and stronger in our faith as we practice this belief system, as we do the things that God has called us to do. This is very Wesleyan. This is very John Wesley, the understanding of God's grace, but also how we interact with baptism. And I, I believe it's extremely important because we are called not just to remember our baptism, to reaffirm our baptism and our baptismal vows, but to stand on our baptism, to live into our baptism and to use it and to, especially in times like today, where we look at the world and we see a broken, chaotic, divisive, difficult place. We need to be standing and living into our baptism more now than ever. Because it gives us the faith to carry on, even in difficult, trying times. So it's important for us to understand what we believe and how we understand baptism. Different denominations look at it differently. We see in this moment where Paul is rebaptizing these 12 disciples that some would say that it is okay to be baptized over and over and over again. As Methodists, we reject this. And the reason why we, we reject this, even though in this scripture Paul rebaptized these 12 individuals, is because they were not baptized in the name of Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. Now, as Methodists, we accept any baptism that is done in a Trinitarian Christian church. So that means you're being baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And they are one God. So if you were baptized as an infant in a Catholic church, amen, God bless you. Your baptism was great. If you were baptized as a Baptist and they dunked you, amen, God bless you. If you were sprinkled as a Methodist, amen, God bless you. We accept all of those forms of baptism. And the reason why we do not re-baptize is because baptism as a symbol is God's grace coming down and transforming us. Baptism is not our work. It is not man's work. It is not the pastor's work. It is God's work. God's grace is what is transforming us in that moment and then through the rest of our life. And we believe that God's grace is perfect. God didn't mess up the first time God baptized you. And if we were to rebaptize you, we would be telling God, you know what? Your grace didn't work the first time. We have to fix it. Powerful, isn't it, when you think about it in those terms? God's grace is perfect. And there's nothing that we, you, I could do to fix God's grace. So we do not rebaptize you. If you came to me and said, I was baptized or Christian 
as a child at another denomination, as long as it's a Trinitarian, in other words, believing in God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, amen, God bless you, your baptism was perfect. There's some things that we do as Methodists that are a little bit different than other denominations. As we talked about in the joke at the beginning, Baptists immerse you, dunk you in water. That's the way Jesus was baptized. It's a great way to be baptized. As Methodists, we actually believe in all three major ways of baptizing. Immersion, sprinkling, and pouring. If you want to go to the ocean and get baptized, I'll go to the ocean and baptize you. If you want to get baptized here and be sprinkled, we don't have a, a baptismal um, uh, bath where, you can, where I can actually dunk you, but we will sprinkle you, we will pour it. All of those work, they're all scriptural. You find them in different parts of scripture. That's why we don't argue about it. We're not going to sit there and say, you have to do it one way. Again, the, the water being dripped on you or you being immersed is a symbol of God's transformation, cleaning you of sin, and you are being invited and brought into the family, the body of Christ. Again, that's why we do it in a public moment, usually in a service. We do not do private baptisms unless it's something of an extreme case usually having to do with someone not being able to come into the church, being bedridden or something like that, being at hospice. They're not going to be able to come here. But even then, we try to do things by inviting members of the church to be a part of it. We do that for a specific reason. It's because baptism is a moment of us being brought together as a family. And we want all of us, or as many as possible, to be present in that moment because baptism is not just about the person being baptized, taking on certain responsibilities, but it's also about the congregation loving that person into a deeper relationship. And that's where we come to when we talk about baptizing or christening young children or infants. Some denominations reject that because they think that the person doesn't have the ability to do the vows. But baptism is not just about the vows. It's about being invited and brought into the family of God. In Scripture, there is no place in Scripture where young infants or children, when a family was baptized together, that that person, that young individual was told to wait on baptism it actually says entire families were baptized together and we assume that children were baptized as well and we know jesus told us never separate me from the little children and so when we baptize infants when we christian them we know they can't accept in that moment so the parents stand for them and answer these questions for the child. And they vow to bring and raise the child in the grace and the family of God. And the congregation vows to do the same thing. This is this prevenient grace moment in that child's life that we as a, a Christian family are vowing to be in that child's life forever. And to be raising them and helping them grow into this Christian, this God relationship. And it's very important that we uphold those vows. And it might be even something where you run into a child, an infant that you were present at their baptism. And maybe you see them when they're a teenager. And maybe they're not doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. But because you were at that baptism, you have the ability to say to that child, I remember when you were baptized. I was there. God loves you. God loves you, and God wants you deeply to be close to God. We all make mistakes, but God is calling you into that relationship even today. That's prevenient grace. That is those God moments that maybe the child doesn't remember being baptized 
but it's going to stay with that child for the rest of their life. And that's what this whole concept of baptism is not just a past moment. For those of you who have been baptized, it's not just a moment in your past. It is a moment that you're living into and through right now, and you'll be living into and through the rest of your life. And that baptismal moment is something that you can stand mightily on with your faith. It will be there for you in the tough times, in the moment where you're questioning everything that's going on in the world. You can stand firm in the knowledge that God loves you and you are a child of God and you are part of the family of God. This is why it's so important that we continue to remember our baptisms. We continue to reaffirm our baptismal vows. Sometimes we, we fall away. We get confused. The world happens. We all go through that. But this moment is a way for us to come back if we've left a little bit. It's a way for us to grow closer if we've fallen away. That's the beauty of it. It doesn't have to be just something we did. 10 years ago, 20 years ago, when we were an infant. We can do it right now. We can reaffirm our relationship with God right now, no matter how messed up it's gotten. That's the beauty of God's love for us. Is God is, our God is a God of many, many, many chances. And so we're going to continue to go through our baptismal vows and liturgy. Again, I ask you to listen to the words. The words are important. They're telling us what and how we believe this baptismal understanding works in our life. There is going to be some questions I'm going to ask you. Most of them I'm going to explain how you respond. It's usually I do or I will. And then at the end of this one section, we will recite the Apostles' Creed together. And so I invite you to take this seriously. Even though we're not pouring water or sprinkling water, this is still a moment for us to grow closer to God through these vows and this reaffirmation. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit all this is God's gift offered to us without price. Through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sins. If you agree, respond by saying, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If you agree, respond by saying, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord? in union with the church with which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. Respond by saying, I do. According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? Respond by saying, I will. Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father, God Jesus Christ, and God as the Holy Spirit? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, 
dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So as we close and as you leave, at each exit there will be a plate that is for your tithe, gift, and offering. If you're watching this at home via the live stream or upload, please go to our website, davidumc.com, and there's an orange giving button about halfway down. Please click on that so that you can give online. Thank you, and God bless you. I know that God will bless you for all of your gifts that you're returning back to God. The ushers will... Uh, usher you out by pew so that we don't all clump out at the exits. Let us finish with the ending of the liturgy of baptismal um, reaffirmation. Remember your baptism and be thankful. The Holy Spirit work within you that having been through water and the Spirit, you may live as faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. The God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace all of your days. God bless you. Amen. Amen.